In this video, we're going to find the Taylor series generated by 1 over x at a equals 2. So let me just remind you of Taylor series. So Taylor series is of this form. So we are trying to seek something of this form. So uh, so to do this, we would start out with the uh, with the general series um, all the way to um, so here you've got x to the power of 1, x squared, x to the power of 3, and so on, all the way to infinity. Let's say this red line here represents that. It, it doesn't, but let's, let's, just, uh, let's just imagine that it does for the time being. So, uh, so this red line here represents this, uh, this function all the way to infinity. We, uh, because we are trying to evaluate it at, um, at a equals 2, so from here, from here, we would apply this transformation, we would apply this transformation so that would then shift everything across by by 2 because we want to evaluate it at x equals 2 so uh, so apply this transformation to this function that would then give you this, so we're shifting everything across by um, by 2 so applying this transformation that would then shift this red red line across by by 2 so we are now worse here but we are now at 2 because we're trying to evaluate everything at 2. So, uh, so we, we, we can call this red line now. We can, we, well, we can call it this, or, or, or let, let, let's give it a, a new name, g of x. But then rather than using a new name, let's just, let's just imagine that um, it is, let's just imagine it's f of x. So f of x is, rep, is now, f of x now represents this rather than what was over here, rather than what was over here. Okay, so so um, so let's just say this thing here now represents this. So now now we demand that um, at x equals two, we demand that the first derivative of the red line to match with the first derivative of the blue line, and then we demand the second derivative to match uh, uh, the, the the second derivative of the red line to match up with the second derivative of the blue line. Eventually, the red line will map on top of the blue line. So. Um, so hang on, so looking at the red line, so this is our red line at the moment, this is our blue line, so when you when you differentiate the red line, that will then give you this, differentiate it again, that will then give you this, differentiate it again, that will then give you this. Looking at the blue line, differentiate it, that will then give you this, differentiate it, that will give you this, and so on. So before we demand that the first derivative of the blue line to match up the first derivative of the red line, before we demand before we make this demand, let's let's make uh, let's make this demand first. We require this to match up with this. So now now to demand that um, at at x equals two uh, at x equals two um, put this into here. So that would mean you putting the two into here and into here and into here and all the way to infinity. So these uh, this term would disappear. This term would disappear, this term would disappear, everything thereafter would disappear, leaving you with a0. So now a0, so remember we demand this to be the same as this. So we demand this to be the same as this. So we demand 1 over, remember we are evaluating at, at x equals 2. So put a 2 into here, so uh, so that, that would be uh, a half equals, what's left over here is just a, a0. So a sub zero is uh, is a half. So looking at this, looking at this, we um, we demand that uh, the original f of uh, uh, f of two, uh, we, we we demand that this thing here equals one over this thing here evaluated at x at x equals two. So so really a zero is a half. So so now we we can insert a half into here. Okay, so so if you insert a half into there, it will then take you to here. Uh, it will then take you to here. So if you insert a half, so we've just figured out um, a a zero. Well, if you plot this into uh, into the uh, in, into a graph plotter, it will then shift. It, it was it was here earlier, and now it's it's moved up to a half because what um because when when x equals two, when x equals two, everything else will disappear. So now. Uh, now, now uh, f of a half, f of a half equals. Now we can see that the f of a half of the of the red line will equal half f of f of a half of the blue line. Uh, well, you you can see that the two here matches up now. So now, now for the second part, we 
we demand the first derivative of the red line to match up with the first derivative of the blue line. So at at um, at x equals two, we will put this into here. So that would mean us putting a two into here, putting a two into here, putting the two into here, putting the two into everywhere up to infinity. Everything will cancel out. This will cancel out. Uh, well, this will disappear, leaving you with a a one. So so remember, we demand that this thing here, the first derivative, to match up with the first derivative of, of this. So now put two into into here. So that will be minus a quarter. That will be minus a quarter, and then that equals uh well a one. Well, we just left with a one. So a one, a one, a one equals minus a quarter. So so we've got remember everything else disappears. So a one now. A1 now is uh, is negative a quarter. So now get a graph plotter and plot um, plot a half plus uh, minus a quarter of this, and then well we we still got uh, these to figure out. We still got this to figure out. This to figure out. Well, if, if you we we now have the first two terms. So you can see that um, at x equals two, you can see that there is a a, a negative gradient of uh, uh, of Negative a quarter. So, so somewhere, in, somewhere in there, somewhere in there, there's a gradient or near negative a quarter. So it's going downhill. But you, you can see that um, up here, up here, is, it's uh, up here at x equals two. It's a bad approximation. But now, now that we figure out um, the first term, uh, so now we figure out the first coefficient and the second coefficient. We we now have um, a better approximation around this region. So now we now repeat the process. Now we demand the um, the third derivative of the red line to match up with the third derivative of the blue line. So at at x equals two, you would put this into here, put this into here, put this into everywhere else, everywhere 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 else. We just can't. Will just become zero. This will become zero because because two take away two. This thing here will be zero. This will disappear. So so we demand that this to equal this. So don't forget we've got to put the two into here. So you're left with two over two to the power of three, which will be eight. Remember we demand that this to be the same as this. So that will equal two uh, a two. So now cancel the two out, so that will give you an eight. So now we figure out a sub two. So now we figured out a sub two, which is one over eight. So now we figured out one over eight here. So plot this into your um, into your graph plotter, and then now it's getting better and better as you as you as you figure out all these coefficients. It's getting better and better. Well, if you extend it. Uh, sorry, if if you repeat the same process, now we demand the third derivative of the red line to match up with the third derivative of the blue line. So at at x equals two, put this into here. So uh, put this into here, and so on. All these all these we just turn to zero, leaving you with uh, with this. So now put the two into here. So that would then become, remember, we demand the third derivative of the red line to be the same as the third derivative of the blue line. So we demand that this to be equal to this. So hang on, put the two into here. That would then give you minus six over, over, uh, 16, uh, equals this thing here, uh, three factorial six. So, uh, so six, a three. So a three. A3 is, is negative 1 over 16. So A3, so now we figure out, we figured out A3. A3 is negative 1 over 16. So get a graph plotter and plot your, your next, your next coefficient in there. That will then give you this. So you can see that it's getting much, much better. So as you head towards infinity, um, the red line should, should map on top of the, the, uh, the blue line. Um, for, a certain region, which we will we will um, we will come to later on, but um, but it, but it, repeat the process all the way to infinity. 
Well, if, if you um, if you if you look at the next term, so we've taken up to to uh, to to the power of three. If you take it up to the power of four, if you take it up to the power of four, it will look like this. It will look like this. So so you can see it's getting better and better. Uh, so this is us taking up to the power of four. So in general, in general, your your Taylor series is of this form here. Uh, the first a zero here will be a half. A one here will be negative a quarter. Uh, a a uh, a two here will be this, and so on. So as you as you head towards infinity, you will take up this form. So this is your your Taylor series. Okay.